is the most self-reliant animal made since the world began. Who can be the most defiant animal known to the world of man? Born with emerald eyes, so cold, so warm, so wise. Within her kingdom lies the world's arena. Do we need to ask more than that? You must know now it's a cat, but a very important cat at that who's called... Thomasina! Thomasina, what are you thinking now? Thomasina, what makes you so highbrow? For I do think it very odd If you are an Egyptian god That the wee little mouse runs in and out his house Each time you blink or nod Thomasina, though you may love to roam Thomasina, don't go too far from home there are beasties in the garden Who would never accept your pardon If you left the jungle yard in which we play Thomasina, don't ever run away This story's all about me. I'm a self-made cat. And here's the house I live in, with the McDewey family, whom I'd adopted when they first came here. They started off by calling me Thomas, but when they, well, got to know me better, they changed that to Thomasina. Humans are funny that way. That the McDeweys are a happy family is entirely due to me. I made them what they are today, although I had to be murdered first. Here's the scene of the crime. In Varallach, in Scotland, in 1912. And this is Mr. Andrew McDewey. From a cat's point of view, even before my murder, he was a most difficult man. Believe me. His wife had died some time before he came here. So there was just himself 
and Mrs. Mackenzie as housekeeper, and Mary his daughter. I'd moved in on them a few days after they arrived, and on the whole I got on with them very well, though mostly because of Mary McDewey. She appreciated my rather special qualities from the start. Thomasina, there you are. Of course I had this sort of thing to put up with every day. Fussed over, treated like a doll, being dressed up, and over a fur coat too. Everything that happened to me from here on was due, in a way, to a blind man and his dog. Here they are now, Tamas and Bruce. Good morning, Tamas. Good morning, Mary. Take them once, Tamas and Bruce, Thomasina. Good morning, Thomasina. She's not in a very talkative mood today. I have the same trouble with Bruce here. He can be very reserved at times. Isn't that right, laddie? But what would we do without them, you and me? Where are you going? Oh, just to get some tobacco from the pipe. Mind how you go, Thomas. Oh, Bruce is my eyes, lassie. Come on, say goodbye to Thomasina. <coughs> Be good now, Mary. Thomasina, it's rude not to answer when you're spoken to. Oh, what have you got there? I found him down by the loch. I think his leg's broken. He can't help us swim or anything. Oh, he looks fierce sick. Doesn't he, Thomasina? Ah, don't touch. Why don't you go and ask my daddy to cure him? Oh, I don't know what you think he would. My daddy can cure anything. Dogs and cows and cats and lions and pigs and all but frogs. And frogs. Everything. You take him in then. Oh, I'm not allowed in the surgery. You go, Geordie. Well, if you say so. I'm only saying I'm here against my better judgment, Minister, that's all. You'll be glad you listened to me, Dobby. Mr. McDewey is a clever man. <laughs> Maybe so, but up till now I've never found much wrong with dosing Jock here with Watson's patent powder. Ah, you must move with the times, man. McDewey is a man of science. Ah, oh, huh? I haven't heard tell much good of that. <laughs> Book learning. Up at Kincaid, his farm, they're grateful enough to him. Two hundred sheep cured at the foot plot, and not one lost. Ah, you're a good persuader, Mr. Petty. But farm beasts are one thing, a man's pet's another. You wait and see. Oh, I'll give him a try. No one can say I'm not a fair man. But it's for him to convince me. How old is this dog, Mrs. Langan? Fifteen years and a bit. I've had him since he was a puppy, the year my husband died. He's been ailing a wee bit this past year, but not so sick as this. He's very old. Uh, the kindest thing would be to have him put to sleep. Oh, no. Ah, now you can see how bad he is with the asthma. The poor dog can hardly breathe. He's in pain, Mrs. Luggan. But you can't put Rabbit to sleep, Mr. McDewey. I wouldn't have come. He's all I have in the world. Couldn't you give him a wee bit of medicine to tide him over till he's well again? Mrs. Luggan, there is no medicine that can make him well. He's very old, he's in great pain, and his life is a misery to him, can't you see? But I can't lose him. What would I do without him? Poor Rabbi. Uh, be fair now, it's yourself you're pitying, Mrs. Lager, not the dog. Oh, dear, I don't know what to do. Well, I've told you what I think is for the best. Now I've told you, it's up to you to make up your mind. Very well. I suppose if he is suffering, you'll be gentle with him. He won't feel a thing. He'll just go to sleep. Will he? Fifteen years. Poor Rabbi. Poor Rabbi. Are you doing the right thing? It's for his sake. Oh, no, there'll be no charge. Just 
Leave him here with me. Be cured, then, Mr. McDewey says there's no cure. He's to be put away. Oh, oh Mrs. Ruddy, that's Ruddy. a shame. No cure for him. If it was my dog, I'd want a second opinion, I'm thinking. I'll go with you, Annie. Good day to you, Mr. McDewey. Good day, sir. Hey. Who's next, please? Please, sir, Mr. McDewey. Oh, who are you? Jody McNabb, please, sir. I'm a bitter friend of Mary's. I found him down by the law. He's hurt his leg. Can you make him better, please, sir? Uh, no one can cure a hurt frog, Geordie, and you put him back where you found him. But he might die. Oh, could you not mend his leg, please, sir? No, nature's the only doctor can do that, laddie. Come on, now. Come on, off you go. I'm busy. You've lost another customer, Andrew. Is there really nothing you can do about old Mrs. Laggard's dog? Oh, not a thing. Just put it out of its misery. Well, uh, whoever's next, will you come in, please? Oh, it's all right, Mrs. Campbell. You go in ahead of me. I'm in no hurry. Hey, there's Geordie. What have you been doing in there? I took my sick dog to Mr. McDewey. Oh, I've got to say then. He wouldn't even look at him. And he's going to kill Mrs. Laggins, Rabby. Kill him? Rabby? Aye, I heard him say so. It's just like Grandfather says about him. He's only good with farm beasts. He's not interested in people's pets. The frog will die if he can't help or swim. And I'm not going to let him die. What are you going to do then? Cure him by magic or something? Come on, Jamie. Why don't you take your frog to the witch woman living in the glen? She's supposed to do magic. Well, why don't you? Our mother says the witch woman's crazy and we're not to go up there. Oh, you're just afraid, the pair of you. I'm not afraid of anything and neither's Geordie. Are you, Geordie? Right, let's take the frog to her. All three of us. I dare you. Very well. Geordie, we'll all go. You want to get your frog cured, don't you? We don't have to tell mother we went. I was only joking. No, you weren't. You dared us. I think you're afraid to go. Me? Afraid? Let's go now. Come on, keep up with us. Afraid to go on then? No. Well, come on. Psst, listen. It's the witch singing by your drum. She is crazy. I want to go home. When you've got this far, what about your frog? Put your box under the tree there and ring the bell. I go on, Judy. We'll wait for you here. No, go no. On, Judy, go on.
leg is broken, you poor wee thing. Has somebody brought you up here to be cured by the mad witch in the glen? I of Newton, hair of dog, give me the power to cure the frog. Listen, magic, off to my cauldron. Where's my broom? Fear and steerly, wish and hail a virily, wail and sail a virily, he thrums a I don't know why I bother to dose that dog of yours. The worst thing that's wrong with him's his owner. Don't give him sugar. Ah, oh, but he has a sweet tooth, Andrew. Poor old Finn. Look how pleased he is. You think more of his affection and gratitude for you than you do of his health. All you people with pets are the same. That's why he's too fat, poor brute. Brute, he calls you, Finn. Oh, that's part of the reason why folks here are slow to accept your doctoring, Andrew. You show no feeling for the sick animals you treat. The animals they love. Are sentimental about you, mean, to the point of not knowing what's best for them. Like you and uh, Mrs. Lagan, who is here just now. Poor old Annie. Poor old Annie. Poor old brute of a dog, you should say. You thought I was hard on her just now, didn't you? Well, my job is to relieve suffering in animals. The uh, tribulations of the soul uh, I leave to you. She'll get over it, Angus. Aye. But when someone you love dies, something of yourself dies too. You think you have to tell me that? Oh, I'm sorry, Andrew. Forgive me. That dog of hers was all old Annie Lagan had left to love. At least you're not alone. No. Look at her now. Thomasina, where are you? Thomasina. It's the jungle. It's a million miles thick. It's full of lions, tigers. <coughs> Thomasina, Thomasina, come back. Have you lost something, Mary? Shh, we're hunting lions. Lions? Here? Georgie, where's your frog? Did Daddy cure him? No, he wouldn't try. We took it to the witch up in the glen. You didn't, but I did. We all did. You saw her? Is she a real witch? Aye. We saw her chant magic over the frog and take it into her house. Did you speak to her? Oh, no, she's queer in the head. She's got a big drum in the house and she bangs on it and sings awful weird. Aye, and there's all kinds of animals there. Did she fly in a broomstick? Well, not exactly fly. But you have one, though. Weren't you afraid? Well, I wouldn't recommend just anybody going up there. You were afraid. You made Johnny take the frog to the tree. That was you. I wasn't afraid. You must be awful brave. I am. A bit. Uh, remember, Angus, uh, just keep him off the sugar. Well... I can try. Ah. Hello, Mary. Jordy McNabb took his frog that you wouldn't cure to a witch who does magic and flies on a broomstick. Uh, she could have turned him into a frog and it would have been all your fault. <laughs> Mary, Mr. Andrew, I'm waiting for you. Come on now, inside, wash your hands. Thomasina! Never mind, Thomasina. Dinner time! Come on now, inside, wash your hands. There's a good girl. That's enough about witches. Mrs. Mackenzie will tell you the same as me. There aren't any outside the storybooks. Oh, yes, there are. She's been making up more of her fairy tales. I didn't make it up. There is a witch in the glen. Oh, in the glen? She bangs a big drum in her house, lives with wild animals, and rides a broomstick. Jimmy McNabb told me he and Huey and Geordie saw her. Oh, they're filling your head with nonsense. And for the hundredth time, will you not feed that cat at the table, especially with meat? She likes meat. And there is a witch. Now, Mary, 
It's a poor wee soul called Laurie McGregor that's rented a croft in the Glen from Mr. Peddy. She spends most of her time weaving on a hand loom. That's the drums your friends heard. Now what do you say? She's a witch. She's a wee bit weird, that's true enough. It seems she's a lassie that doesn't mix with other folk. But mind, she's not been there long. Some of the shepherds in the Glen say she has a rare way with beasts and birds and that. Now, mind, Thomasina doesn't spill her cream. Cream? Oh, just a wee drop, Mr. Andrew. It helps her to see in the dark. She told me so. Didn't you, Thomasina? There, you hear? Ask her if she'd like me to go out and get my rod and catch her salmon. She says no. She'd rather go to the stall on market day and choose her own fish. Aye. Well, no, no more talk about witches or magic. Just say your prayers, get into bed. And look after Mum in heaven and us down here, especially Daddy and Miss Mackenzie and Willie and Georgie and Jamie and Huey and Thomas and Bruce and Georgie's frog and Thomasina and me. That's all till tomorrow. Yours truly, Mary. Amen. Good night. Yours truly, Mary. Slippers. In you get. Here we are. about that before, my bunny, and mustn't keep that cat on the bed at night. There. Oh, please let me have her. No, no, you can have your doll if you like. I don't want my doll, please. No, she must go out, and you must go to sleep. Go on, lie down, there's a good girl. Good night. Good night. Good night, Thomasina. You know. Yes, I knew, and McDewey didn't. This being put out for the night was just nonsense. I could get in again any time I wanted to. Mary and I had it all worked out. It was as easy as that. Thomasina. Thomasina, come on up. But not tonight. I'd remembered it was Wednesday, the night before market day. They set up the stalls at dawn, so Wednesday's always my night out. And just when I was beginning to feel like breakfast, the market was getting ready to provide it. sauce for it. The danger of helping myself. Which needed cunning and caution. A lot of caution. And speed! doing? Mary! I can't find Thomasina. I've looked everywhere. Well, she can't be far away. Come on now, sit down. But she didn't come home last night. For what we are about to receive, may the Lord make us truly thankful. Amen. I'm not hungry. Daddy, she must be lost. Of course not. Her cats don't get lost once they've decided to move in on people. She's just had a, had a night out and hasn't come back yet, that's all. She's been out all night before, but she's always come back. She climbs up the tree and gets in my window. What? She always has. It's our secret. Ah, certainly is. Well, I'm off to the surgery now. Be a good girl. Eat your breakfast. Don't worry about the pussy child. But she's lost. Thomasine is too clever to get lost. You do like her, don't you? Ah. Of course. 
Would you do anything for her? If I asked you to? Promise? Uh, eh? Well, let me go and look for her now, please. You promised. You're even craftier than Thomasina, you wee monkey. <laughs> We'll split up. Mary, you come with me. Hey, what are you looking for, son? A lost cat. Have you seen one? Not at my stall. Are we good? Go on, I'm busy. She's a big ginger. Mr. McFarlane, who would you like? Nice cabbage. Have you seen the lost cat? Be follow, be follow. Queer a habroon, an after Misha cat, an after Misha cat. To course, to course. Mac is show. We follow. Thank you very much. Oh, it's not Thomasina. But never mind, we'll find her. Huey, Mary! I found her. She's here, Mary. Oh, Thomasina, give it to me. I don't think anything's broken, but she's terribly stiff. Oh, poor Thomasina. I couldn't help it, Constable. He walked right in front of me. It looks like Bruce. Bruce? My Bruce? What's all this about? Oh, Mr. McDewey, you're just here in time. It's Thomas's Bruce. Where is he? Steady now, Thomas, steady. He's fair crushed, sir. I couldn't help it, Mr. McDewey. Better get him back to the surgery, quick. Bruce is my eyes, Mr. McDewey. Can you save him? I'll do what I can. Stay with him, Angus. He's in good hands now, Thomas. Now, come on, you come with me. This is going to take a long time. I hope his heart will stand up. Are you ready? Stay here. Now listen to me. I've got blame Thomas's dog here. He's badly hurt. Well, so is Thomasina. Mary. If you only look at her. All right, I'll look at her, but go away now, all of you. You make her well? You promise? Yes, yes, I promise, but go now. Fine. Come on, out, all of you. I think you'd better look at her, sir. Not now, ma'am. We've got work to do. What's me do, sir? Look. she's lying on. That cat has tetanus. Get her out of here. Deal with her, disinfect her hands and hurry back. But, sir, Mr. McDewey, you promised the child. The cat is beyond help. Will you do as I tell you? Hurry up, man, with the dog to see you. Ah, well, sir. Oh, well. Nearly an hour already. How much longer can it be? Aye, the waiting is hard. Well, Bruce will live, Thomas. Leave him walk again. Thank God. Take me to him. Not now. He's still unconscious, but I'll send Willie round to fetch you here this evening. Bruce will know you then. And he'll get better? I'll be as good as new. It's a great skill you have, Mr. McDewey. And no one can deny it. There no. now. What did I tell you? Come on, Thomas, I'll take you home. God bless you, Mr. McDewey. God bless you. Uh, 
His pulse rate's fine. I'll stay with him till he wakes. Uh, you do. I never thought to see such surgery as that. Aye. And what you have to do now will be just as hard, I'm thinking. You have to tell the child about her cat. The shoe black tries his bread to earn, and would an honest penny turn. When mud upon our boots leaves stains, his ready help the good payment gains. The beef eater we see today. Daddy, Thomasina, is she better? She is out of pain, Mary. What was wrong with her? Let me go to her. She is better, isn't she? Mary, uh, listen, uh, listen to me just a minute. You see, that there, there are some things that you you have to learn to face, even if at first they seem a bit unfair. Where is she? Thomasina's wound was poisoned, and she might have made other people's pets ill, even die. But you did save her. I couldn't, Mary. I couldn't. See, there are some things your daddy can do and some things that he can't. What did you do to her? He, uh, had her put to sleep. There was nothing else I could do. Now, try to understand, Mary. No! No! You said you'd make her better. You promised. You promised. Oh, Mary, you... I'll never speak to you again! Mary, please. You promised. I'll go up to him. Aye. And, uh, take everything she was wearing when she found the cat. Everything, do you hear? And burn what you can't boil. I didn't realize she was going to take it so hard. Could you not have saved the cat? It was wounded, infected with tetanus. I did what was right. I can get her another cat, can't I? Well, can't I? I'll buy her anything she wants. Why did she take it so hard? For a clever man, you've an awful lot to learn. Don't be so sad. You'll do yourself harm. Look, I tell you what we'll do. We'll give Thomasina the best funeral any cat ever had, won't we? Aye, with the full service and everything. My mother's got just the right box that'd do fine for a casket, and we could pick some flowers and have a procession like when old Doodle was buried, and everyone in the village would see us. Aye. Mary, you'll wear widow's mornings and walk behind the casket weeping. And Danny here, she can meet you for Mona. I can cry awful loud, Mary. <laughs> Not now. Will I wear a hat and a black coat? Miss Mackenzie has one. Aye, we'll all dress up and get everyone to come and... Uh, I know, Jamie's just learning the pipes. He's not very good at it I can yet, play but... Macintosh's Lament. And I'll wear my dress kilt with my skein do and spar on. And everyone in the street will say, there goes the poor Widow McDewey, a burying of our dear Thomasina. Foully done to death, God rest her soul. Will they? Will it leave? Aye. It'll be a great, great procession, you'll see. We'll go and get Thomasina now. Aye, come on. I open my eyes. And where was I? They say that to die is a journey from light into darkness. But here was light again. This was no quiet, endless sleep. I was flying, flying wildly, without weight or effort, diving, spinning, falling backward and downward into the mists of time where my ancestors were worshipped in the temples to Bast thousands of years ago.
the goddess with the golden eyes, staring and staring, drawing me upward and upward, and upward and upward. Then there were flowers, flowers everywhere, all around me, touching me, and the sound of music, wild enough to wake the dead. What are the children are burying the day? Mary McDewey's cat, Thomasina. My grandson Huey told me their father couldn't be bothered to cure its sickness. His own daughter's pet. Ah, well, maybe he was busy at the time. You know what we... Thomas's dog, and after all, it's a blind man's eyes. His own daughter's pet. It's hard to understand. Right, this is far enough. Put it here. Now get some stones and build a cairn for the grave. Now get the coffin off and put it down just there, you two. Come on, hurry. Now get some stones. Come on, get some stones. That'll do fine. Now, let's get on with the service. I'm going to take the service. It was my idea. No, you're not. I'm the oldest and I've come prepared. Brethren, friends and fellow mourners. Oh, go on then. We have come here today to bury Thomasina and to praise her. She was the friend of Mary McDewey here, who you all know. Uh, yeah, well, anyway, there she is. <laughs> Shh, not yet. Hold your noise. Thomasina was one of the best cats in all our Galsha. And we all feel for our best friend and owner. Wish, not yet, not yet. There is no doubt that Thomasina was a terrific mouser, too. She had a few faults, I, but I won't mention them here. Um, and her mortal remains will now be laid to rest. Now. Still beating. 
Ah, oh, poor thing. Didn't they know? You come with me. Mary, come along and get your supper. Hello, Mary. What have you been doing all afternoon? Mary, your father's speaking to you. Mrs. Mackenzie, I've seen the witch that lives up in the Glen. What? We all ran away from her. Huey and Geordie and Jamie and Jock and Annie. Oh, what's this nonsense now? And uh, what were you doing in the Glen? And she is a witch. I've seen her. So there. Um, Mary, the, the kittens that Mr. Peddy's cat Amanda had are, are now ready to leave their mother. Would you like to come and choose one for yourself? Mary! Would you like to come to Mr. Petty's with me tomorrow and choose a kitten? Jamie McNabb can play Macintosh's Lament on the pipes with only nine mistakes. Answer me, Mary. Answer your father, child. But he's not very good at Loch Lomond. This is ridiculous. If this is her way of sulking just because... Don't you want your supper? No, I do not. No, who's sulking? And you can tell Miss McDewey that if she does want a kitten, she'll have to come and ask me. Everybody was real scared when they saw the witch, except me. I wasn't. I just looked at her and said, I'm not afraid of you. Oh, give me strength. Oh, you just do this. Eat your supper. Now you've made your father angry. No, I haven't. My father's dead. seen it back to life. What's done is done. Very well. Good night, then. Oh, Grandad, don't keep on about it so. That cat's funeral was nothing but a children's game. Not to some of us. I'm telling you. And I've said it before and I'm saying it now. That Mr. McDewey is doing no good here. But don't interrupt me, woman. He's a townsman, and not a Highlander. He has no feeling for animals at all. Come now, Grandad. Some of the farmers round... The farmers? Did you not hear that he made an order to destroy the whole herd of Ian McLaren's cattle because one cow was sick? That's the law. They had foot and mouth disease. It wasn't the law in my day. That it was only McDewey's opinion that they had it. And look at his record. Never mind the cattle. Annie Lagan's old dog, Robbie, he had him killed. He saved Blind Tamas's Bruce, though. Oh, aye, that was because everybody was there watching. That was just showing off. Now, Grandad, you shouldn't say that. Oh, uh, the man that did what he did. And he wouldn't even take the trouble to treat his own daughter's cat when it was sick. Is no better than a murderer. It would be a good thing if he went away. I, I'd make it too hot for him here, I'm telling you, if I was younger. And so would others. Him and his newfangled science. Mary! Mary McDewey! Are you coming out to play? Mary! She won't be coming out today. She's in mourning. And anyway, we've got work to do. What work? Forming an anti-McDewey society to drive him out of Inveranach. Oh, listen to him. My grandpa said he's no better than a murderer. Your grandpa. And he told me Mr. McDewey had two whole herds of cows slaughtered just because he thought one beast was sick. People are saying he ought to go, and I think we ought to join them. And what does Blind Thomas say about it? 
Oh, he's only one. Now, here's what we'll do. Me and you, Geordie. Morning, Miss McLeod. Morning. You're not thinking of taking your cat to Mr. McDewey now, are you? Why not? Oh, he won't bother with it. He doesn't care for anybody's pets. What? He'll just say it can't be cured and then kill it. Oh, get away with you. It's true. He even did it to his own daughter's cat. And Mrs. Lankham's dog, he killed them. I did hear about Rabbi, but he was awful old. That cat of yours is younger than Mary's Thomasina. You take him in there and he'll just get his bottle of chloroform and... Just a minute, Harry, listen. We were just telling Mrs. McLeod, Mr. Wallace, about Mr. McDewey. You'd be well advised not to take your dog in there. I'm thinking of rebuilding my pigsties. You know, I've had two outbreaks of swine fever, I, up to now. Have you spoken to this new vet here, uh, McDewey? Not yet. Is he any good? One of Mr. McLennan's cows had foot and mouth disease, and Mr. McDewey had two whole herds killed. That young Annie of mine took my best black shawl from my closet yesterday and tore it into ribbons in some game. Why? I saw them playing at funerals, burying young Mary McDewey's cat. Mr. McDewey killed it. Killed it? Aye, the same as he did Mrs. Leggins' dog. He kills things. He saved Thomas's Bruce, laddie. Aye, because everybody was there watching. That was sure enough. He's an animal murderer. You tell me he killed his daughter's cat. He didn't like it, so he took his gun and killed it. His gun? Well. Oh, isn't that awful? Well now, Andrew. Glad I saw you. I wanted to work with you about Mary. I uh, did what you said, asked her to come around and choose one of your kittens, but she'd have none of it, nor me either. It's like speaking with a blank wall. To a child of her age, feeling is stronger than reason. You know that, Andrew. Uh, and grief is usually forgotten quickly, too, but the, the death of this cat, it's like an obsession with her. Well, she's something of a lonely child. Forgive me. She's no mother and she needs someone to love. She has me. I'd do anything for her. No child's ever been loved so much. Unselfishly. What do you mean? Tell me the truth, Andrew. Well, you may be a wee bit jealous of that cat of hers. The truth now. The animal had to be destroyed. It would have died anyway. You can take my word for that. Angus, would you do me a favor? Do you think you could have a talk with her? You might be able to reason with her. Well, I can try. I wish you would. She's at home now. <laughs> We are playing in the sunshine and not moping here indoors. Geordie McNabb and Huey came asking for you. Why don't you go and look for them? Oh, Mr. Perry, Mr. Andrew's not in. I was just passing by, Mrs. Mackenzie, and I thought I'd pay a call on Mary. Would she be at home, do you think? I'm here, Mr. Perry. Well, now, there you are. You were so quiet, I didn't see you. Oh, fair home outdoors. You're wise to stay inside. Would you mind if I sit down and rest a while? Here? Oh, I think the stairs are a grand place when you want to have a good think. You know, I was thinking just now about your Thomasina. What with my own cats, I get all mixed up remembering what yours was like. Thomasina, now, he was about... She. Oh, she is, Thomasina. <laughs> she was about, what, uh, so long? And uh, did she not have a wee square blaze on her chest? No, it was round. Round? Aye, now you remind me, it was round, aye. But she did have three little white feet, didn't she? No white feet at all. No? Oh. But she had a pink nose with two black specks on it. I remember that well. No specks. No specks. Do you remember how she'd sit and look at you sometimes with just the tip of her tongue showing? When she was waiting to be fed. Yeah, when she was waiting to be fed. You see, Mary Thomasina isn't dead at all. Not really dead. 
Not when we can remember her together like this because she's alive in our minds. No. And as long as you can remember her like this, she'll never die. Just call her to your mind and she'll come. Even if you were to have another week after love. You know, I was saying to your daddy just this morning... My daddy's dead. I killed him. Did you, Mary? How? I killed him. I put him in a box with flowers in it. We all took him out into the glen and had a funeral. And now I haven't anybody at all. Mary. No! I like being alone! Bernie, I'm here to look at the bull. I've let him out. He's in the paddock. Oh, right, I'll find him. No need to, Mr. McDewey. He'll do very well. Just tell me how much your fees are. What's all this about? I'll be no more needing a veterinary. If there's anything wrong with my beasts, I'll take them to the woman in the glen. She's a rare way with them and charges nothing, I'm told. Is that where you're taking the cow? Aye, my man is. What's wrong with her? She's dried. You have as much chance of getting pints of beer as milk listening to that rubbish. I thought you were becoming enlightened, Barney. What I do with my beasts is no concern of yourself, Mr. McDewey. This cow has no disease reportable under the acts of the county. Your bull didn't either. Aye, I didn't know then what sort of a bet you were, putting beasts to death whenever it suits you. What? Aye, my stockman heard it from his son at school in Inverannach. The dogs and cats should no use for, even your own child's pet. I see. So you believe that. And you're going back to the witchcraft and the superstition. You said times change. Well, maybe they're changing back again, Mr. McDewey. <laughs> the old remedies are as good as book learning, sir. Good day to you. Apart from Mary, I have another headache now. The whole village seems to be boycotting me and spreading tales about what a heartless monster I am. Oh, a few children. It's having its effect. In a few days, the people have forgotten that the blind man's daughter is alive because of me, but they remember the, the few creatures that I had to have destroyed. Be patient with them, Andrew. Patient? <laughs> well, tell me something. What do you know about uh, a half-witted woman named... Uh, named Laurie, who pretends to be a witch. Well, I rented her the croft she's living in. I know that. That's why I'm asking you. And she's not half-witted. Nor does she pretend to be a witch. She's been labelled that, just as you say you've been labelled monster, only she doesn't mind because she wants to be left alone. Well, she's not succeeding. There are at least two farmers that had one round to scientific treatment who are taking their beast to her. Aye. I hear she has a remarkable skill with animals. Now, uh, what skill? Without real knowledge, you can do great harm. Would you take a, a sick child to a quack doctor? Some people have natural gifts, Andrew. And Laurie McGregor has the rare quality of mercy. Since you know her so well, perhaps you'd tell her to stop undermining the progress that I'm trying to bring to these people here. Why don't you tell her, Andrew? And tell me afterwards what you make of her. Aye. Aye, I will one day, and put a stop to her interference with my work. Time passed. And I began to see and feel again. I couldn't remember any part of my first life. Although something told me I'd lived before, that I was still me. I'd heard that a cat has nine lives. I accepted the fact. So, this was my second life. My life with a girl named Laurie. She was gentle and kind. I'll give her that. But she didn't seem to realize, and neither did the other creatures around me, how important I was. There we are. All of you, Dorcas, Mac, Molly. Whisker, be nice to Thomasina now. Be nice, she said. But none of the others paid any attention to me at all. They weren't really my kind, anyway. 
Thomasina, dear, go and walk in the sun now you're able. There are others here who are not. I wasn't important anymore. Treated just like everybody else. Now I know how a king feels in exile. Huey, Jamie, quick! What is it? Come and see, quick! A badger! He's been in the trap a long time. And he's badly hurt. What'll we do with him? If we try and take the trap off, he'll only bite. We could wrap him up in a sack, trap and all, and take him to the village. To the vet? To Mr. McDewey? We can't do that. We're trying to get rid of him. What else, then? Couldn't we take the badgers to the witch? She's nearer. Aye, that's true. She couldn't cure a mess like that with magic. I bet she could. Mr. McDewey would only kill him. So let's wrap him up and take him to the witch. Jamie, get the things. I'll get the sack. gave me that I've been here before feeling. You know what I mean? I knew them, and yet I didn't. They made me feel uneasy somehow. So I kept an eye on them. To her, then. You. You're the eldest. You're always telling us. Aye, oh, but. But it was Geordie's idea. He's too big for Geordie to carry. But if you're afraid. I'm not afraid of anything. Go on, then. Put him by the tree and ring that bell. Please, God, help me. Wait! Don't touch it. But it's hurt from that. Curse of gin traps. Look what it's done Wait, to Mind me. yourself! Drop it. It'll tear your throat out. It'll not harm me. No creature ever harms me because they're not afraid. Put it down, you mad. I so I hear. Let me go, let me I'm go. I'm sorry, but a wounded badger could half kill you. No creature ever harms me. Don't him. touch him. Leave him to me. To you? Why, who are you? My name is McDewey. I'm the veterinary from Inveranach. You are? Now I see. What do you mean? You have the skill that I haven't. The skill that I prayed for when I found the badger. Don't you see? You're meant to help him. And you must. It's, it's no use, I tell you. It's too late. Be kinder to put him out of his pain. And wonderful to give him his life. You have the skill for it. Please, for pity's sake. Don't go. Got to get my instruments. They're in the car. God, you sent him. Please make him hurry back. All right, well, that's it. I'll have to see how it takes. 
still uh, hardy creatures with great vitality. He has a chance. Bless you, and thank you for giving it the chance. Now, you have to stay quiet until the wound's healed. Have you got a place where you can keep them? Yes. Have all these wild things in your care? Yes, they come here to me. Some instinct or guardian angel brings them. Uh, and uh, what kind of treatment do you give them? Food, warmth, comfort, and love. And let nature take its course. And that mends them. And uh, what about the other beasts that are brought to you? Farmer Bernie's cow, for instance. Oh, I know all about that. Uh, what did you do for her? I sent her back to him with a message for him to be kinder to her. <laughs> I'd like to see his face. And this? Oh, I found him one morning by the tree outside in a box. He had a broken leg, but he's better now. Oh, well, I can describe his guardian angel to you. He's about six years old, red hair, and his name's Jody McNabb. Well, keep your eye on the badger, Miss McGregor, and see that he doesn't tear off the dressing. Aye, I'll watch him. You know, um... In, uh, in Inveranach, they, uh, they call you witch. And if you can get all these creatures here to live together in peace, perhaps there's some truth in it. The truth is that they have security because they have no fear. Animals are not like people. They only fight and kill when they're hungry or afraid. Not for gain or to prove how strong they are. You don't have to be a witch to understand that. What made you come here, Mr. McDewey? Well, I, I thought that, uh, it's no matter now. I must go. I've work to do. Wait, I must pay you for the work you've done. Uh, there's no need. Will you take this in from me? I made it here. Well, I'm glad to have it. Thank you. I knew the man, and yet I didn't know him. He reminded me of someone, something that was missing in my present life. What do you think he's done? Killed it. But the witch wouldn't let him. He wouldn't be likely to help her with magic, now would he? Suppose we had a look through the window. It's our badger. We're responsible for him. Aye. Maybe if we were careful. Jordy. If she catches us, you can say you came to see how your frog was getting on. You want to know, don't you? Come on, then. one who brought the frog to me. He's better now his leg is mended. Do you want him back? Then come and see him. He's not very strong at hopping yet, but he can swim all right. He's going in with her. She must have put a spell on him. wee frog. Look. Oh, he's better. 
Did you do it with magic? With a powerful magic, Geordie. You know my name. Was it you who brought the wounded badger, too? Is he going to be all right, please? Did you do magic with him? No, that was Mr. McDewey. What he did was magic. Mr. McDewey, does he do magic? He has a wonderful skill that's almost magic. He saved the badger's life. Can I go now? Don't you want to take your frog? Thank you for killing my frog. I'm not afraid anymore. Well, not much, that is. I have to go now. Are you all right? Yes, look, she cured the frog. But what about the badger? She cured him too. She put a spell on Mr. McDowey and made him help her. She's an awful good witch. She's not a witch at all. She uh, isn't even what Mrs. Mack calls uh, something weird. She's a bit like yourself. Wants to be left alone. Except that she's uh, she's got all kinds of creatures up there with her. Uh, squirrels and rabbits, uh, stray dogs, cats, uh, wild birds, and, uh, and a badger. If I go up there again, would you, would you like to come with me and see him? Look, Mary, I brought you a present. Look. Something of your very own. I can get nowhere with her. She shows no signs of wearying of this game she's playing that, that I'm not there. And how do you play it, Andrew? Talk to her, or behave as if everything was normal between us. Weed stories to her, but she pays no heed. And that wee dog you got for her? I should have none of it. I had to take it away again. No, she won't forgive me because I failed her. At least that's the way she sees it. I think the trouble lies deeper than that. You were the only human focus for her love. That's why her shock of disappointment in you was so great. Andrew, have you ever thought of getting married again? No. You need another focus for your love besides the child, and Mary needs a mother. Ah, it's too late for me to fall in love again. Oh, so you've seen Lolly McGregor? Aye, I've seen her. What do you make of her? I don't know. She, uh, she has a strange way with her, a strange skill that's instinctive. I don't understand how she lives out there, cut off, alone, and yet doesn't seem to be alone. You should see her again, Andrew. Maybe she could teach you that rare virtue. You're in need of it, my friend. Great need of it. Good night, Angus. So he came to see Laurie, but putting a stop to what she was doing soon went out of his mind. And he kept on coming to see her. Watching you. 
If only I had the skill you have. How much of a way of taking the fear out of these wild creatures, making them trust you, that I wish I had. But I'm a witch, remember? Oh, you must be. You cast some kind of a spell on them. I love them all. When they're lost or strayed or alone in pain, that's what they need. I feel for them. And you, with all your skill, do you? I give them what I have, my knowledge of what to do. I do my job. Is that all it is to you? You must have chosen to become a veterinary. Uh, no, my, my father, who is one himself, he chose it for me, and uh, he was a man that you didn't cross. No, uh, all my life I wanted to be a doctor, dreamed of it, and worked for it. must have put a spell on me to make me tell you that, but except for my wife, I've never told another soul. Only she knew. You? Aye, she's dead now, about five years ago. You say you believe in providence and in God's mercy, and you wonder why I don't. How can you not? I love my wife. She did nothing but good. She went out nursing the sick in an epidemic, caught the sickness herself and died. The will of God is inscrutable, they told me. God is love, they told me. Which is true. And that's what she believed. Yet the God who's supposed to be love allowed her to die. And therefore you reject him? Because your love died, his love has no truth? Is that what you mean? Ask yourself that when you've known pain. I saw both my parents drown, Andrew, in a storm at sea. But my faith didn't die with them. And they wouldn't have wished it, I know that. I'm sorry. Forgive me. Forgive? I'm glad you told me of yourself. And I told you. Aye. I'm glad too. I must go now. The man's coming back gave me that feeling once again of there having been some other time, some other place. And one night it came to a head. It was as if something was pulling me, drawing me on, and on, and on. I knew the way, somehow, although I didn't know why or where I was going. She's in bad shock. Could turn to pneumonia. I see signs of it now. I 
I've done all I can for the moment. I'll be around first thing in the morning. Thank you, Strathsea. Uh, what should I do? She's taking her temperature every hour or so. It's just over a hundred now. If it gets any higher, let me know at once. I won't leave her. Uh, show the doctor out, Mrs. Uh, and you'd better get out of those wet things, you know. You'll catch cold. Uh. I heard the shouting, saw the doctor arrive. Glad you came, Angus. I'm worried sick. If you should catch pneumonia. Aye, that's a great battle for a wee baron to fight alone. Pray for her, Andrew. Pray for God's help and mercy. Pray. Yes, pray. Because if ever there was a man in need of mercy, it is you. You know I'm not the one for praying, for going down on my knees. Well, pray on your feet, man. It's what's in your heart and mind that matters, not whether you kneel or not. Though that would be good for your soul. It's this stubborn pride of yours that has made you live inside yourself so long. I've forgotten how to pray. I can't do it. I can't feel the need for it. Humble yourself, Andrew. Humble yourself. If you love the child, pray for her. Thomasina, where have you been? I didn't know. From the present back into the past, to the present again, where I was safe, protected, and loved. Granny. Well, you're not to. They say in the village there's a witch up here. She'll put the evil eye on you. You devil, you'll pay for this. Come on. What's he gonna do to the horse? <laughs> Let's go and see. Aye. Darvas, put the bear to his paces and wake him up. Come on, get out. Get him out. Get out. Come on, get out. All right, get him out. Get him out. Now, come on. Down you come. Down. Come on, now, this way. Up. Up now. Get him out. Up and dance. Come on. Up. Up. Up and dance. Come on, you black man. Get up and dance. dance. Get up and dance. dance. This one's worse than the other. The bear can hardly walk, let alone dance. What are you doing under there? Get up! Come on, boys, get up! Come back here, you. Get back to work. Don't worry, sir. 
there's some gypsies in the glen and you've got to do something about it. Aye, they're beating horses and there's half-starved goats up there and a poor bear with a sore foot. It's true, Mr. McCauley. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. One at a time. Now. We were up there watching them and they're beating their animals. Oh, they're awful people, sir. You've got to arrest them, Mr. McCauley. I've already told them to leave the district and move on. I gave them until tomorrow while they rest their horses. Rest them? You should see what they're doing. You bring me a complaint from the proper person and I'll act on it. I don't take orders from a lot of children. What proper person? The county officer concerned with cruelty to beasts, Mr. McDewey. Mr. McDewey? Oh, what's this? Hosberry, please, sir. We're sorry that she's sick. No, she's very sick. We hope she'll get better soon. We haven't seen much of her since. Since the funeral of Thomasina. But we really came to see you about another matter, sir. What's that? To report cruelty to animals. There's some gypsies up in the glen, Mr. McTuy, with performing animals. They're awful cruel. They've got a bear with a sore foot and they make him dance. Constable Macquarie said that if you were to examine them and report them to him, he could put a stop to it, sir. But I thought that my opinion as an animal doctor was no good. Uh, somebody called Huey Sterling has been saying so. Will he be a friend of yours? He's no friend of mine, sir. Huey Sterling's a bit of a fool, sir. Everybody knows that. <laughs> <coughs> So would you do something about the circus animals? Aye, aye, uh, I will when I can. Well, uh, run along now, all of you. He won't do anything. He wasn't even listening. Yes, he was. He said he'd go when he can. He doesn't care about those animals. Well, we can't do any more, can we? Yes, we can. We've got to. Hey, Geordie. We could tell the witch about it, Laurie. The witch? Aye, why not? You say you're not afraid of her. You could tell her. Me? She'd maybe put a spell on those gypsies. Turn that big one into a horse or a bear. And learn for himself what it's like to be badly treated. I bet she'd do it. Go and tell her, Geordie. Go on, I dare you. you a present if you'd like it. It's because she cured my frog. Oh, Geordie, you didn't have to do that. How is your frog? Oh, he's fine. This is my present. I made it myself. What a beautiful pipe rack. Thank you, Geordie. It's just what I need. I thought you might. I was, we were wondering if you'd do something else with magic. Another frog? Oh, no. There's a gypsy circus down the glen with all kinds of animals and a bear and the people are awful cruel to them, beating them and that and they're half starved. Have you told the police? I and Mr. McDewey, but they won't do anything about it. Mr. McDewey won't? No, we asked him and he said so. We thought maybe you could put some red common gypsies to stop them. Would you please? The bear's got an awful sore foot. I'll go and see what I can do anyway, I promise you that. I knew you would. Oh, thank you. I have to go now. She's going to do it! She's going to put a spell on the gypsies! Staying here all day and night torturing yourself, man. You've had no rest, no food. Rest? What rest can I have? Strat says that she's no longer fighting. It's as if she's lost the will to live. Where is Strat say? He said he'd be back by now. He said the fever must run its course. There's no crisis yet. He 
He's done what he can for Mary. We're all of us praying for her. Praying? I humbled myself and prayed too. I'd crawl on my hands and knees if begging for her life would save him. She's lost and hurt Angus. I could make no contact with her. Someone who has the gift for hurt and lost creatures could unlock the child's mind. You mean Laurie McGregor? I do. Then ask her. Bring her here. She's unlocked your mind enough to make you realize you're not sufficient to yourself. Stay here with the child, Angus. This time he looked helpless and lost and frightened. Get the bear out. We'll have him on next. Wait a minute. What are you doing in there? She's the witch the women speak of. Come on out, you! If you're in charge here, you should be ashamed. Your dogs are sick. These horses past work. The bear is You're breaking my heart. All right, then. You dance, witch. <laughs> you do the bear's act for him. Come on. <laughs> for the bear. <laughs> look at him. Look at Mr. McDowie. Who's in charge here? I am. King Targu. What right have you to knock about my people? What exactly were you doing? Driving out the witch. Who set the evil eye upon it? Evil eye? I've heard about the evil that you do with these wretched beasts here. What do you want here? I have the power to close down your show for cruelty to animals. That's what I'm going to do. Ah, uh, you'll pay for this. Get him and the witch! for this. Come on! Get the boys out of here. Keep clear of this. Take that man in charge for cruelty to animals. Here, give a hand here! Try to hold still. The bleeding has stopped, but it's an awful deep cut you have there. A 
Lolly, will you listen to me? I, I told you now not to have finished dressing this wound. You should have gone down to Inveranach with the others to a doctor and not come up here. Oh, stop! Listen to me. I am listening, Andrew. I'm a wee bit scared not to when you're so fierce. I was afraid of you down there in the fighting. And afraid for you. I came up here looking for you. Just like the other strays and the lost that come to you. Why? My daughter's sick with pneumonia. I need your help. I want you to come to her with me. To your house? Please come. Why me? Well, you have a, a kind of a magic for the hurt and the sick. And I've hurt the child so much that her sickness is the worst for it. You have? How? Well, she had a pet that she loved more than anything. I had to have it destroyed. I didn't realize how much it meant to the child. But in, in doing what I did, I, I betrayed her trust in me. I, I killed something in her. Laurie, you prayed yourself once, didn't you? And you said that my coming here could be the answer to the prayer. Aye, it was. Well, I prayed too. And your coming with me now could be the answer to that. For me. For Mary. Will you come, please? What have you been doing, Matt, to get in that state, brawling somewhere? How is she? The same. What is this? Mary. Mary McDewey. Do you hear me? Andrew, may I take her? Do what you will. What does this woman think she's doing? Let her be. So little of her left. When the man took Laurie away and they left me alone, I was frightened. I had to be with somebody. The feeling grew stronger and stronger. <laughs> Suddenly, like the lightning flash that split the tree, everything, my other lost life, came back to me. I knew where I belonged. I had to go home. 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 Thomas, he knows. Can't be. It's my Thomasina. Yours? I found her sick in Nesta. Is she hers? Is that the pet? Thomasina! 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 Call her! Make her come in! No, you must. She must come to you. Thomasina! Don't you see that if Thomasina is the love your child has lost? Only you can give it back to her. Call her. Make her come. Thomasina. Come to me. For the love of God, come to me. I knew him now. McDewey, my murderer. And he needed me. Without me, he was lost. So this was my chance. The moment of truth for both of us. Thomasina. Come to me. Yet, because of my second life with Laurie, Thomasina. because of what I'd learned from her, I didn't want revenge. I wanted to come home. Mary. 
Mary. I brought Thomasina to you. She's come back to life again. No, it's not a ghost. Not a dream. It's Thomasina. She's come back. It's Thomasina. She's alive again. Aye. She's alive again. And you're alive again, too. I'm alive again, too. of newt and hair of dog give me the power to cure the frog listen magic off to my cauldron where's my broom so fear and steerly wish and hail of early ways and sail of early he thrums I was so lucky. I did a film test for it, and I was so lucky to get the film, uh, the part in Thomasina. And there were a lot of other people who were much better than me and much prettier and all the rest of it. But Walt Disney said, she's my girl. And I was delighted. And um, I loved it because there were a lot of animals in it. And I'm very fond of animals. And this was absolutely fantastic. And I took the part so seriously that when I was preparing for it, I took all these animals back to my little tiny flat in Chelsea. I took back a Bambi, I had three rabbits, a jackdaw, I had mice. Anyway, after about a couple of days, I realised that this wasn't really right, and all the animals went back to their homes. But it, during that time, I did lots of photographs with the animals and got to know the animals very well. And I suppose I sort of became Laurie the Witch. <laughs> she was a loner and she loved animals, and I think Laurie had a great understanding of life and what is important in life and how to make people understand um, the balance of life. Don't you see that if Thomasina is a love your child has lost, only you can give it back to her. She was unusual and she wasn't like everybody else. And she had a life of her own. She sang in Gaelic and she spoke Gaelic. Shh, listen. It's the witch singing by a drum. She is crazy. I want to go home. I think the children were afraid of her what because she lived wrong? on her own in the woods. And somebody who doesn't do the normal thing is frightening. Let me go, let me go. Oh, it's all right. What's the matter? But I remember the children, all the children were very, very sweet and I love working with them. Very adorable, absolutely adorable and so gifted. And what was really interesting is that you look at a child and you would say, I don't know why they've done that and that's not really working. And you look at it on the screen and it was amazing. Children are naturally the most wonderful actors. I know, Jamie's just learning the pipes. He's not very good at it. I can play Macintosh's Lament. And all them address kilt with mosquito do and spore em. And everyone in the street will say, there goes the poor widow McDewey, a burying of our dear Thomasina. Foully done to death, God rest her soul. Poofy, really? Aye, it'll be a great, great procession, you'll see. We'll go and get Thomasina now. Aye, come on. <laughs> Of orange cats. 
cats in the film because you can't work cats non-stop in the same way that you can't work children non-stop. They have their special hours. So there are a lot of orange cats and you will notice in the film that sometimes they look a little different and then sometimes the cat had to get wet. Well, you wouldn't want the same cat to keep getting wet. We had special cats that did um, floating down for the dream sequence. I know we had 40 Siamese cats for the dream sequence. I'm sure that the people who were in charge of the animals knew which ones were best for which shots. So there were a lot of consideration for the cats. They were all very nice, the cats. All the animals were lovely. Even the badgers it were very, very, you know, badgers are vicious creatures, vicious. Cuss of gin traps. Look what it's done to Mind yourself. Drop it. It'll tear your throat out. But even they were rather nice, but they stink to high heaven, badgers. Oh, you're mad. Aye, so I hear. And I was holding them all the time, so everywhere I went in the canteen, people were walking away from me because I'd been holding the badgers and really stunk as well. No creature ever harmed Don't touch them! Leave them to me. To you. Patrick McGoon is a very special person because he's very quiet and very reserved. I don't suppose I ever had much of a conversation with him. I'd worked with him in his television series and then I worked with him on Thomasina. And he probably never chatted. You know, he would be quiet, he'd stay on his own, he'd look at his script, he'd come and work. I enjoyed working with him very much. It was a very matter-of-fact and nice working relationship. I'm sorry. Forgive me. Forgive? I'm glad you told me of yourself. And I told you. Aye. Well, the most lovely thing was when I arrived at Renfrew Airport in a new dress to do the filming in Scotland, it was the first time that I'd ever arrived at an airport and all these people rushed up and took my photograph and I wrote back to my mother and said, oh, the most exciting thing has ever ha you know, has happened to me. I really feel like a star. When you're suddenly being treated like a star, it's the most amazing thing if you're not used to it. You know, going to a beautiful hotel and flowers in the room and people collecting you in cars, just being spoilt, rotten. And I know I was very lucky to be working for Walt Disney because in those days, I mean, he used to oversee everything. I think he even saw all the rushes of every film. There might be, you know, five films or ten films going on around the world. He seemed to be everywhere and seeing everything and deciding about everything uh, without interfering. After Thomasina, I did The Fighting Prince of Donegal. That was another Disney film. It was Irish accent this time. Then I did um, The Foresight Saga, which totally changed all of our lives, everybody that was in it. And then I did a lot of things for the BBC. I was very lucky and I won a lot of Emmys, which was very nice. It's a very interesting thing. When you're working on a Disney film and you're very young, um, you get what is called a Disney image. And when you're young, you think, oh, this is not a good image to have. This is boring and people will think you're not an exciting and interesting actress. And how silly could you be? Because the real truth is um, to make any films which have a fe feel-good factor to them or make any entertainment with a feel-good factor is a fantastic privilege and there isn't enough of it but at the time I thought oh dear I must get rid of this Disney image and I was very stupid because in, interestingly enough what I've gone back to is if I go on the road in a show I always do one which is a comedy I realize that making people feel good is really nice get a real buzz from it and to coin a phrase we all lived happily ever after Frankie, how are you, huh? Ooh, you like that, don't you? <laughs> hey, little fella, what are you so sad about, huh? On this program, we're going to tell you a story about a cat, a very exceptional cat. The heroine of this book, Thomasina, by my friend Paul Gallico, who's a great cat man, as you may know. Now, for me, I'm a dog man. 
Oh, I like cats, don't get me wrong. <laughs> I've had cats of my own. I like all animals. <laughs> but I must be honest with you, I've always had a special feeling for dogs. But cats are pretty special too, you know. Now, if this one could talk, he'd probably say, can you jump 10 times your own height? And if you humans, in proportion to your size, were as fast as I am, you'd be able to run how many miles? 100 miles an hour. And do you wash 20 times a day? And can you lick the back of your neck? <laughs> you know, the cats had quite a place in history, too. Thousands of years ago in Egypt, they were worshipped as gods. It was because the government in 17th century England had so many cats destroyed that the Great Plague of London was such a terrific disaster. There weren't enough cats left to keep down the rats, which spread the disease. And you small fry, <laughs> do you know that your brain is the nearest thing biologically to the human brain? And your face muscles are almost exactly like humans? You cats are the only animals that can frown or smile the way we do. <laughs> The great difference between the pet dog and the cat is that the dog gives its owner everything of itself, but the cat will give you just so much and no more. They probably feel superior because they're the only domestic animals who can fend entirely for themselves. Perhaps that's why our, our country here has a law that there's no such thing as legal ownership of a cat. They're so darned independent, they won't be owned. The most self-reliant animal made since the world began. Do we need to ask more than that? You must know now it's a cat, but a very important cat at that who's called... Thomasina! Thomasina, come along with me now. From the best-selling novel by Paul Gallico, Walt Disney brings to the screen the Three Lives of Thomasina, the story of a remarkable and wondrous cat who offers three of her nine lives to these people. To Mary, Thomasina offers the warmth of a much-needed love. And Thomasina offers new friends. Where's my broom? She is crazy. I want to go home. Virally, he thrums away. A real witch. I. You must.
must be awful brave. I am. A bit. To Mary's father, Thomasina offers hope. Can you save him? I'll do what I can. Stay with him, Angus. And the courage to fight for what he believes. Get the boys out of here. Keep clear of this. To the beautiful and mysterious Lori, Thomasina offers a magical skill and the power to use it. If only I had the skill you have. I wish of a way of taking the fear out of these wild creatures, making them trust you that I wish I had. But I'm a witch, remember? Oh, you must be. Thomasina. And who is this remarkable and wondrous cat? You know. The best in family entertainment. Create new memories with your children and these great Disney classics on Disney DVD and video. Everybody sit down and shut up. Ah! The Old West will never be the same when Don Knotts and Tim Conway ride with the Apple Dumpling Gang. And then they're back for more high adventure. Here, here, the Apple Dumpling Gang. As the Apple Dumpling Gang rides again. Watch the wind. No one can forget everybody's favorite love bug, Herbie. Did you see this thing take off? In the love bug. Surprise! Haley Mills is double trouble as two sisters with the perfect plan to bring their parents back together. The parent trap. Caught in a world where they don't belong. You two got powers beyond belief. Two children have one chance to escape. Escape to Witch Mountain. Then, when Tony gets into trouble, it's up to Tia to save the day. Return from Witch Mountain. And when a professor invents anti-gravity goo. Fuck. It's high-flying fun for the whole family. Fred McMurray in The Absent-Minded Professor. Bring home the memories of yesterday today. Only on Disney DVD and Video.